I'm Tisha Bader with Shalom TV's news update for Thursday, January the 16th, 2014. Israel's Iron Dome intercepted rockets that were fired early this morning from Gaza. At least five rockets were launched from the Gaza Strip towards the city of Ashkelon in Israel. It is believed that the missile defense system intercepted them all, but the IDF was patrolling the area to see if there were any rockets that succeeded in landing. Soon after the rocket attack, Israeli Air Force retaliated, hitting an underground rocket launcher, an ammunition arsenal, an ammunition factory, and a terror infrastructure in the northern Gaza Strip. The IDF spokesperson said that the IAF had direct hits on all its intended targets. Palestinian sources said that five Palestinians were injured in the IAF strike, but that no injuries were life-threatening. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu met with Jordan's King Abdallah in Amman today. The unannounced meeting reportedly focused on the current Israeli-Palestinian peace efforts. Netanyahu released a statement upon his return to Israel today, emphasizing the significant role that Jordan plays in the current efforts, and that Israel greatly considered Jordan's interests and the 20-year-old peace treaty with Jordan in any future agreement with the Palestinians. The Jordanian palace said the talks with the Israeli prime minister reflected King Abdullah's keenness to achieve a tangible progress in Palestinian-Israeli negotiations that would meet the aspirations of the Palestinian people while at the same time protect higher Jordanian interests. According to the royal palace, Abdullah called on Netanyahu to seize the opportunity to achieve a lasting and comprehensive peace with the Palestinians Abdallah was quoted as urging Netanyahu to make use and, quote, build on the opportunity made available by the consolidated efforts of the U.S. Secretary of State to achieve tangible progress in the peace negotiations. In two separate incidents in the West Bank, Israeli vehicles were attacked. A Palestinian gunman fired on an Israeli vehicle last night near Nablus. There were no injuries reported there, but the car sustained some damage. And in a separate incident in the South Hebron Hills, Palestinians threw stones at an Israeli vehicle. There again, just damage was caused, no injury. Police were searching the respective areas for the suspects. The U.S. House of Representatives passed a spending bill yesterday restoring funding for Israel at its pre-sequester levels. The bill maintains funding at $3.1 billion for 2014, restoring cuts that were put into place by the sequestration last year. The bill also includes $268 million in funding for U.S.-Israel cooperative anti-missile programs, which is not considered assistance because Israel contributes to the programs. APAC, the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee, praised the bill's passage, saying these funds fully meet America's commitment in the U.S.-Israel Memorandum of Understanding, helping our Democratic ally meet critical defense needs during this period of heightened regional instability. Pope Francis is set to meet with 16 Jewish leaders from Argentina at the Vatican. The meeting was organized by the Latin American Jewish Congress and Rabbi Abraham Skorka, who is the rector of the Latin American Rabbinical Seminary. The Argentinian delegation includes Julio Schlosser, president of the Jewish political umbrella body DAIA and the vice president of the World Jewish Congress DAIA, and Claudio Eppelmann, the executive director of the Latin American Jewish Congress. The delegation also includes rabbis who are working in interreligious dialogue throughout Argentina. The Pope, who is from Argentina, will visit Israel in May. In an attack thought to be motivated by anti-Semitism, a Jewish man in the Ukraine was beaten this past weekend. Hillel Wertheimer, who is an Israeli-born Hebrew teacher living in Kiev, was ambushed Saturday night by four suspects after they followed him home from synagogue. The men punched and kicked Wertheimer in the entrance of his home. CEO of the World Jewish Congress Robert Singer called the attack a vicious act that must not go unpunished. The WJC said the attack was part of wider anti-Semitic incitement and extremist activities in the Ukraine, specifically perpetrated by the Svoboda political party, which, is, which it said is anti-Semitic and neo-Nazi. 
President of the Jewish Confederation of Ukraine, Boris Fuchsman, said nowadays the beating of a defenseless Jewish school teacher is a culmination of anti-Semitism. The Ukrainian government, he said, must take tough measures to prevent such incidents in future. The Ukrainian embassy in Tel Aviv said the Ukrainian government, quote, consistently implements coherent actions to fight anti-Semitism and xenophobia in society and takes tough measures to prevent anti-Semitic crimes, adding that the embassy condemns any acts of violence, anti-Semitism and extremism of any kind. Community leaders met with state security services in the area to urge more police protection for Jewish community buildings in the area and are planning to meet next week with the U.S. ambassador in Kiev, Jeffrey Pyatt. Wertheimer has since recovered from the attack. A Palestinian film has been nominated for Best Foreign Film by the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences. Omar was directed by Hani Abu Assad. It tells the story of a group of young Palestinians who plan to kill an Israeli soldier. One of them, title character Omar, is caught by Israeli intelligence agents and told that they'll set him free if he helps them capture the shooter. The movie was filmed on location in Nazareth in Israel and in the West Bank. It won the special jury prize at Cannes. Israel's hope for Oscar consideration, Bethlehem, had not made the short list for the Oscars. That movie focused on the relationship between an Israeli Secret Service officer and his teenage Palestinian informant. The other nominees that will now face off in the Best Foreign Film category at this year's Academy Awards ceremony are The Broken Circle Breakdown from Belgium, The Great Beauty from Italy, The Hunt from Denmark, and The Missing Picture from Cambodia. The 86th Annual Academy Awards will take place on March the 2nd. The winners of the National Jewish Book Awards for 2013 were announced yesterday. They included several Israeli authors, among them Yossi Klein Halevi, Amos Oz, and Ari Shavit. Klein Halevi, a longtime Israeli journalist, took the top prize, the Everett Family Foundation Jewish Book of the Year. For his book, Like Dreamers, the story of the Israeli paratroopers who reunited Jerusalem and divided a nation. Oz won the award for fiction for his book, Between Friends, and Shavit, also a journalist for Israel's Daily Haaretz, won in the history category for My Promised Land, The Triumph and Tragedy of Israel. Other winners include former British Chief Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, who won in the category of Modern Jewish Thought and Experience for the Koren Pesach Machzor, Richard Brightman and Alan Lichtman for FDR and the Jews, which won the American Jewish Studies Celebrate 350 Award. Phyllis Chesler won in the category for biography or memoir for An American Bride in Kabul, a memoir. Michael Smart and Barbara Ashkenaz's book Kaddish, Women's Voices, won in the category of contemporary Jewish practice. The awards will be presented at a ceremony on March the 5th at the Center for Jewish History in New York City. The Jewish holiday of Tu Bishvat is being marked in Israel and the Jewish world, celebrating the Jewish New Year for the trees. Israeli President Shimon Peres invited children to a Tu Bishvat celebration at his residence yesterday to celebrate the festival. And Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu, together with Karen Kayemet Le Israel, Jewish National Fund Chairman Effie Stensler, and Jerusalem Mayor Nir Barkat planted trees in the Jerusalem forest where Netanyahu said we are a link in the chain of generations. We return to our country in order to stay here and strike root in the land. Tu Bishvat began yesterday evening. It ends tonight. And turning to our Shalom TV programming for tonight, Thursday, January the 16th. Tonight at 9, Mark Golub is joined by Joseph Puder, Executive Director of the Interfaith Task Force for American and Israel, discussing the BDS or Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions Movement. That's tonight here on Shalom TV and ShalomTV.com. And that's Shalom TV's news update for Thursday, January the 16th, 2014. I'm Tisha Bader, Chatzameh.